This video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on underwriting of shares and debenture. This chapter is found in corporate accounting. I would like to solve one sum here before you on underwriting of shares. Explaining the theory part also. Now underwriting of shares or debentures or underwriting of shares and debentures. What is underwriting? Underwriting is a contract between company and the brokers known as underwriters. So it is an agreement between company and brokers enforceable at law. So it's a contract. Okay, what is the exchange of promises that has taken place in case of underwriting? The brokers, underwriters, promises the company that your issue to the public, issue of shares to the public, issue of debentures to the public, we, we shall make efforts so that the issue of shares and issue of debentures is fully subscribed. Means all the shares and debentures issued to the public are taken up by the public for that we shall make efforts. And suppose if the issue is not fully subscribed, then the extent to which the issue is not subscribed, the underwriters, brokers commits to purchase the shares of the company so that issue of shares by the company is fully subscribed. This is the promise given by the brokers underwriters. What is the promise that company gives? Company promises to give them underwriting commission. So underwriting is an agreement between company and underwriters wherein, wherein underwriters commits to purchase the shares not subscribed by the public under the issue of shares made by the company for a consideration that they intend to receive is the commission from the company. Now this underwriting is an agreement and how the liability of underwriters to subscribe for the shares determined that is the important point that we want to study. I want you to observe this sum on the screen. I will read and explain the certain terms relevant for the purpose of solving the sum. This is the sum that I want to take care of. Nomen Limited issued 80,000 equity shares which were underwritten as follows. So, company wants to go for a public issue for how many shares? 80,000 shares. One of the underwriter broker here says that I commit the liability for subscription of companies issue of shares to the extent of 48,000. So A says that I will make efforts and I will see to it that 48,000 shares are being subscribed by the people in the shares of the company. So the share application money, share applications will be received by the company to the extent of 48,000 by the efforts of A. Similarly B commits, B commits to work for 20, he undertakes the liability, gross liability, against 80,000 is gross liability is 20,000 shares. He says that I will work so that I or I ensure or I assure that 20,000 shares subscription liability is on my shoulders. Similarly liability taken by C corporate C corporation 12,000 shares. This is the gross liability. Total of this works out to be 80,000. The above mentioned underwriters made an application for the firm underwriting. Now what is firm underwriting? Firm underwriting means minimum number of shares underwriters commits to purchase from the company irrespective of the fact that issue is fully subscribed or issue is oversubscribed. So even if the share application received by the company is equal to 80,000 from the public, even then underwriters commit to purchase these many shares from the company or even if the issue is oversubscribed, A, B and C commits to purchase 
this many shares firm, 100% from the company. So that is firm underwriting. Now this firm underwriting, what is the purpose of firm underwriting? Suppose that I am broker A. I say people that fill the application for application form for this company. The my clients to whom I recommend that purchase the shares of this company or file an share application for fill a share application form of this company, then all those my clients, I am a broker, underwriter. I suggest so many people to subscribe for the issue of the issue of the shares by the company. They will say that when you are saying us to apply for the shares of this company, how many shares are you going to purchase? I say that whether you may get the shares or not, but I am firm, I am, I am going to get this many shares from the company. That is a firm underwriting. So firm shares, that are the minimum number of shares that broker intends to take from the public issue. The total application including excluding firm underwriting, so without these shares, but including marked applications were 40,000 equity shares. Now what is marked application? When I advertise for the issue made by a company, no man company, no man company has gone for a public issue. I recommend my clients that fill in the application form for no man company. But when you fill in a form, this is the form that I give you. On with there is a stamp, my marking, marking of A, marking of B, marking of C is found on the share application form. And those application forms are received by the company. The company has received application form from the public. Either they are marked one. If they are marked one, then the marking will be of A or marking will be of B or the marking will be of C or the form will be straight way to the company wherein there is no marking. So marking implies that the application received by the company because of the efforts of the broker. So when the Mr. A the marked application of Mr. A is 8,000. So 8,000 equity share application received by the company on with the stamp of A is there. So this many applications are received by the company because of the efforts of A. 10,000 marked application of B. So 10,000 applications are received by the company because of the efforts of B because on those share application form the rubber stamp or stamping or marking of B is found. Similarly, by efforts of C, 4,000 applications are received by the company. So these are the marked applications, which shows that the efforts of the broker or underwriters materialized in uh, obtaining the applications to the company. So these are the marked applications. The underwriters contract provides that the underwriters be given credit for the firm application. Now this firm application, should this firm application, see these are the marked application, they are the applications received by the company because of the efforts of this broker. But this firm applications or firm shares, should it be considered as a marked application or unmarked application? That depends upon the agreement between underwriters and the company. Now in this case, the underwriting contract provides the underwriter to give a credit of firm application. So this firm application will be treated as marked application. If this term is not there, if this is not the stipulation under a contract, then firm application by default are considered as an unmarked application and they, gets, they get distributed in the proportion of gross liability. But if the firm, firm application are to be treated as, as marked, then those firm total application should not be distributed in, in gross liability proportion, but they are to be given credit to the underwriter as per their firm underwriting. So here, the underwriters are getting the credit of firm application and that the credit of unmarked application given in the proportion of the shares underwritten, so gross liability. You are required to show the allocation of liability. Working will be considered as a part of your answer. Now see, I want to decide, see, what is the public issue 80,000 shares? How many applications are received? 40,000 applications are received. See, 
फोर्टी थाउजेंड एप्लीकेशन आर रिसीव दीज फोर्टी थाउजेंड एप्लीकेशन आर अदर देन दीज फॉर्म अदर देन दीज फॉर्म सो आउट ऑफ एटी थाउजेंड फोर्टी थाउजेंड एप्लीकेशन आर रिसीव फोर्टी थाउजेंड आर द एप्लीकेशन नॉट रिसीव फ्रॉम दैट यू कैन डिडक्ट दिस फॉर्म एप्लीकेशन बाय दैट रिमेनिंग एप्लीकेशन रिमेनिंग इज द लायबिलिटी ऑफ दिस अंडर राइटर बट हाउ मच इज द लायबिलिटी ऑफ विच अंडर राइटर दैट वी वॉन्ट टू वर्क आउट सो आई प्रिपेयर वन स्टेटमेंट फॉर दैट इन दिस स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल रेकॉर्ड द क्रॉस लायबिलिटी द कमिटमेंट मेड बाय द अंडर राइटर्स सो कमिटमेंट मेड बाय ए इज फोर्टी एट थाउजेंड शेयर्स ग्रॉस लायबिलिटी बी ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड सी टोटल एटी थाउजेंड How many applications are received by the company by the direct efforts of the underwriter? They are known as smart application. So outcome of the efforts of A, B, C will be deducted first of all. So first of all, smart applications will be deducted from their gross liability. So forty-eight thousand application received because of the efforts of A, eight thousand. Gross liability of B and company twenty thousand. Application received by their efforts, they are known as marked application ten thousand. C Corporation twelve thousand applications, twelve thousand is a gross liability. Application received by their efforts are four thousand. Now, this is the gross liability. Yet not satisfied, so gross liability minus marked application. This is the liability that could arise. But. How much are the unmarked application? So total application received are forty thousand. Out of that, eight thousand plus ten thousand plus four thousand. So that works out to twenty-two thousand are the marked application. So application received by the efforts of the underwriters. How many applications are received? Otherwise, then the efforts of the underwriter. So total application minus marked application, you will receive the unmarked application. So let me prepare a working note. Total application received, excluding form and including marked, forty thousand. What are the marked applications of A, B, and C? Twenty-two thousand. Unmarked application, eighteen thousand. This unmarked application will be distributed among standard writers in the proportion of their gross liability, that is forty-eight is to twenty is to twelve. So in this sum, unmarked application. Are distributed in the proportion of gross liability. So eighteen thousand unmarked application distributed in the ratio of forty-eight is to twenty is to twelve. So forty-eight is to twenty is to twelve. So eighteen thousand multiplied by forty-eight divided by eighty. Eighteen thousand multiplied by twenty divided by eighty. Eighteen thousand multiplied by twelve divided by eighty. So if you work it out, this is the eighteen thousand distributed in the proportion of forty-eight is to twenty-eight is to twelve. So now you will come to know the liability. This forty thousand total issue eighty thousand applications received forty thousand. Forty thousand is the liability of underwriter. So this is the liability. Now the underwriter are to be given a credit for firm underwriting. So this is they have already committed to pay purchase the shares of the company. They are to be deducted. So if you deduct mark applications, firm underwriting. I'm sorry, the firm applications are deducted because the credit for firm apply firm underwriting firm shares credit is given to the under underwriter against their liability. So. If you deduct twenty nine thousand two hundred minus six thousand four hundred form, so this could be the liability of Mr. A, eight thousand five five thousand five hundred minus eight thousand eight thousand is a form application that B has promised to take. Now there is a surplus of two thousand five hundred. This two thousand five hundred will be distributed between A and C in the proportion of forty eight is to twelve. So two thousand five hundred negative number if you get in this fashion, that should be distributed amongst the remaining underwriters. In the proportion of their gross liability, so two thousand five hundred distributed in the proportion of forty-eight is to twelve. So forty-eight divided by sixty, two thousand, two thousand five hundred into twelve divided by sixty. Okay, 
So this 2,500 distributed between these two because there is a firm underwriting made by B. So B is to take 8,000 shares. His liability is 5,500 shares only. So he is taking more than liability. That surplus is distributed between A and B. So 2,000 to the, to the extent of 2,000 liability of A declines to the extent of 500 liability of C declines. So now the liability of A 20,800, liability of C 2,400, 20,800 and 2,400 is equal to 23,200. So 23,200 shares are the shares out of unsubscribed 40,000 share capital, 40,000 shares less firm shares. So firm shares are to be added to it. So A's commitment to purchase 6,400 shares, B's commitment and C's commitment. So this is the minim, minimum firm shares that they are going to take. Plus this is the liability that has arisen because of the shares were not subscribed by the people and they have committed to subscribe all those shares which are not subscribed by the public. So that 23,200 is the liability over and above the firm liability that underwriters are supposed to purchase the shares of the company. So on the basis of that, the liability of A works out to be 27,200 shares, 8,000 is the liability of B and 4,800 is the liability of C. So this is how issue is 80,000 shares, application is 40,000 shares, 40,000 shares are not subscribed. Out of that 27,200 shares are to be taken up by A, 8,000 shares are, are to be taken up by B and 4,800 shares are to be taken by C. So this is how the liability of underwriter is being worked out. In this, I have distributed unmarked applications in the proportion of gross liability. The next sum that I intend to take where the unmarked applications will be distributed not in proportion of gross liability but it will be distributed in the proportion of net liability that I am going to consider in my next lecture. Then after that I am going to consider few lectures wherein the credit is given to the underwriter for the firm application. Then I am going to take one sum but the firm applications credit is not given to the underwriters and the firm application is treated as an unmarked application and they are distributed amongst underwriters in the proportion of gross liability. This is how I am going to take various sums on underwriting one by one taking points, this describe points one by one in my next sessions. So I have tried to explain this sum. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.